Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast, it's really for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. In my last episode, I shared with you about my story in my depression experience. And that was not an easy experience at all, as I needed to take a trip down on my memory lane, one that I really dreaded to revisit. There was a roller coaster of emotions that I had to experience from being determined that I want to record this episode for those who need to hear it to feel less alone, to keep procrastinating it, whether it's writing my notes about it or recording it or editing it or even up to the point where I've already posted a podcast, I was still procrastinating on sharing about it on my Instagram because that means that it's out, it's public. But I eventually had the courage to post it. Upon posting it and getting all of your feedback and your messages about it, I am encouraged. And as I had some time to reflect about this entire experience, here's what I think. Although it took me back to a dark place again, instead of putting me in a place of pain, I feel like I actually came back with a different lens as an observer to understand what I was going through again. So this time around, instead of being in that dark place as someone who was suffering, I was able to observe how I was dealing in each situation and how I was able to cope and get better from it. And after being able to observe all of this, I could see myself from an angle of someone who is already healed. And now I feel even more ready to help those who are still going through this tough season in their life. And if anything... I think one of my biggest fear at that point was that I would be drowned in the darkness again as I revisited that dark place. But instead, I think it only reminded me of how I've become the version of me today. My life has changed a lot after having depression. It has been four and a half years since I'm on the route of recovery. And so in this episode, it is a more hopeful and lighter episode because we'll be talking about what comes out at the other side of the dark phase. So specifically today, I will be sharing with you how I overcame depression and how has depression changed my life in a positive way. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I did share an episode with my entire depression story just prior to this. So if that is something that you are interested to listen to, you can pause this episode and tune into the other episode on my depression story before coming back. And for those of you who are here after listening to that story, thank you for staying in with me. I hope that this episode would be a lighter one for you to follow. Now, how did I overcome depression? and how you might be able to do it as well. The first step to any problem is to always be aware of that problem. And I think that as I look back into myself, one thing that I was very, very grateful for is that I was able to accept and admit that I have a problem. Because you need to know that denial is not going to help you in this situation because the longer you deny that you have an issue, the longer it's going to take for you to actually get the help that you need. Depression is recognized by the World Health Organization as a mental disorder. Hospitals around the world are treating it in the psychiatry department because it is a real issue. It is not a made-up thing that people uses just as an excuse. It's a freaking illness, okay? So if you have flu, you are going to go see a doctor and get medicine. And if today you are so unfortunate to be diagnosed with, say, cancer, 
you would go to a doctor and seek for different opinions and get treatments, maybe go for chemotherapy. So you need to know that depression is also an illness. It is just a mental illness. So if you have an issue with depression today, you should go see a doctor and get it healed. It's as simple as that. You need to start reframing your mind. Instead of just thinking that you are depressed, you need to think that you have depression. Okay, Depression is not who you are. It is an illness that is leeching off you, that is sucking out all of your energy right now, and it's telling you all the things that are not true in your head. And this illness can be treated. There are a lot of treatment methods in the world that I'm going to share with you just in a bit. Just know that there is a health issue, you're going to go get it treated. It's as simple as that. The second thing that I think helped me a lot in getting better is that I learn to open up to the people that I care about. I know that when you are having depression, you have this very dark and negative thoughts in your head. Thoughts that you are not proud of. Thoughts that you know if you were to share this with other people, they are going to question why are you having these thoughts or they might even judge you. There is a lot of fear surrounding these things that are going on in your head. But us humans, our lives are designed to be co-living. It's very hard for you to get through life without depending on the people around you. Especially us as Asians, we live in a very collective culture where a big chunk of our life is somehow related and intertwined to the people around us. And I understand that with these thoughts, it's very hard for you to open up because you are worried that the people that you care about would be disappointed or they might not understand what you are going through. But if you have heard my story, I hope it gives you the hope to know that people out there are more receptive towards depression than you think they do. We are very fortunate that we live at a time where depression is a lot more common and being taught about in today's society. And I think that makes opening up a lot easier. I am very lucky and I'll always be forever grateful that my parents were so understanding and receptive when I opened up to them. In fact, one more thing that I did not share with you guys in my last story is when I had my final major depressive episode happening when I was working here in Malaysia, I had to call my manager and tell him that I couldn't make it to work because I physically couldn't and I knew that I needed to go to the hospital to get help. And I think my manager was in shock when I called him. But at the same time, he just told me, take the time you need, do the things that you need to, just come back when you can. Okay, everything would be fine. And after that short break, I went back to my company and decided to tender my resignation because my dad advised me to just quit and take some time off for myself. And I did that. And what came to my surprise was the question that my HR asked me. Instead of thinking for the company's benefit and, you know, get rid of me before I became a liability for the company, the HR actually asked me if I wanted to just take a sabbatical and come back when I feel better. And I, and I feel very grateful for this option, knowing that these people are not only not judging me, but they are so understanding of this situation that they actually care and want me to come back, even though I was at that point already a liability for the company. Back then, I was working in a startup and I think that that might explain the more progressive mindset that they have. But still, I live in Malaysia, which is considered a developing country. And to have people who actually understand the situation and give me that option, I will always be grateful. And as for my friends, when I open up to them about my depression situation, one of the biggest fears at that point that I had was that they wouldn't understand 
why I was thinking these thoughts and they would disown me as a friend. But of course, that did not happen. Even though they couldn't understand my entire situation, they tried their best to be there for me. I feel like it's one thing for people to not understand and avoid you, which did happen to a few of my friends. But most of them just did not understand but still continued to show up by my side. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it and tell you that all of your friends are going to be so supportive and is going to stay with you to the end. Unfortunately, that is not the reality. There are going to be people that you will weed out from your current circle just because that is life. But in this process, you would also learn to see that who are the true friends who would do anything to be there for you, to care for you and to support you in this journey as well. And I'm so glad that I did open up to my friends because it was through the support of my friends, those who took me in without questioning much, just physically being there with me and doing simple, normal life with me, Those were the moments that I needed the most at that situation. And I'm so grateful that I had a strong support system that allowed me to have that to get on my road to recovery. Thirdly, I'm going to share with you about the official treatment options that you have if you are struggling with depression. The three things that are most known are counseling, therapies, and antidepressants. And I'm going to break down each and every one of them for you because I personally have been through every single one of them. The first would be counseling, which is an option that is available in most universities or corporate companies. That is how I got help in the first place as well through my universities. And if these resources are not available for you, there are also free and affordable options from public services and NGOs as well. I found a list for um, these options in Malaysia and I would include it in the show notes for those of you who might need it as well. Um, But I do want to mention this. Especially here in Malaysia, a lot of these free and affordable counselling options actually come from, say, religious organisations or maybe people from the public sector and they might have certain sets of values that may differ from yours. And sometimes they may even be hurtful to your set of values as well. I'm just going to give an example. Here in Malaysia, Muslim is our national religion. And the values from this religion actually gets imposed into a lot of the things that we do. And so I don't think it would be helpful for you if you are, say, a queer person trying to seek help and you are going to a facility where they are imposing Muslim values. I think you should get what I mean here. So there might be this risk for you to take note of. And I'm really sorry if you fall under one of the categories that might be struggling because of this issue. I just wanted to put it out there because I think when I was going through counselling through the public government hospital, um, the lady was Muslim and she had certain values that She was just imposing on me and I felt very uncomfortable about it. But I was aware enough to keep an open mind about it. But anyways, let's go into the next point, which is therapy. So that is another option that you have. Psychotherapy, it's very similar to counselling in a sense that the method of treatment, it's mostly talking to a professional about your problem. And you might wonder, like, why do you want to spend so much money on talking to someone about your problem. And here's my take on it, right? These people that you are talking to, they are professionals who have spent years in studying the signs of the causes or the symptoms in asking you the right questions and helping you to understand why you are acting a certain way and to really help you to solve that problem that you have in your head. Depression is 
a mental illness. It is in your head. So the way to fix what's in your head is to really talk about it and to understand what's in it as well. I do want to say though, finding the right therapist, it's not an easy process because you are going to need to find someone where you can comfortably open up about yourself, someone that you can trust to talk about all these things. And it's not so easy to just find someone and have all these problems solved. For me personally, I went through a few therapists and I didn't like most of them. Perhaps one was too insensitive and the other one was a little bit too sensitive that I felt like she was fake. Like you are going to face problems like that. But having said that, the process of talking to this therapist and getting this treatment also helped me to solve the problem that I had in my head. One very specific example is that I was going through a lot of self-hatred and self-blaming about the traumatic incident that happened to myself. And talking to my therapist was able to help me to understand that entire situation and gain closure from it. I would say that that was one of the pivotal moments in my head that was able to help me to get out of depression eventually as well. Thirdly, we also have antidepressants. Contrary to popular belief, antidepressants are not happy pills. They don't boost your dopamine and help you to feel happy instantly. Instead, most of the antidepressants in the market are either SSRI or SNRI. And their focus is to change the level of the serotonin in our head. So serotonin is that neurotransmitter in our brain that helps to regulate our mood. I am not a science medical professional, but one simple way to explain it is if your serotonin level is extremely low, then it's harder for you to regulate your mood and to feel normal, like a normal person. So when I was prescribed antidepressants, I was given SSRIs. And when I first took it, I did had quite a few side effects on me. I was nauseous, I was drowsy, and it was doing something to my jaw where I just constantly felt the need to chew on something, which is weird. And then I yawn a lot as well. I have an entire YouTube video on my SSRI experience. If you are interested, I would include it in my show note. But basically, there were side effects when I first took it, and I was well aware of that possibility. But as time passes, my body learned to familiarize with the effects of the drug and and the side effect eventually go off. But I think with the first drug that I was prescribed, I was still feeling tired pretty constantly. And so I switched up to another kind of SSRIs. I think I went from Cetraline to Acetaloprem. And that worked better for me in terms of my entire sleepy situation. And I was on medication for a total of two years plus before I was able to phase it out of my system. How I can best explain how antidepressant worked for me is that my mood before taking antidepressant, it was on a constant low and antidepressant was able to help me bring it back to a neutral level at the center not any higher i wasn't any happier my mood was just regulated to a neutral point and from there on it is still my own work to find happiness in life to find meaning in life and to really still work on the whole happiness side of things but the important thing here is that antidepressants was able to help me to go from an extremely low point to a neutral point to get started again. And as you can tell from my experience, antidepressant, it is a long-term treatment option. You are not going to take it for just one or two weeks and then phase out of it. It is likely going to be there with you for a few years and you need to take it consistently every single day. If not, the chemicals in your brain is going to go haywire and it's not going to look good. But here's what I think. Would you rather not rely on a medication and be upset and depressed and empty and hollow and dark for the rest of your life? Or would you rather rely on a pill that you can take every single day to help you get to a normal functioning point 
so that you can lead your life like every other normal human being and fight for what you want and to look for that purpose and that happiness again. That's something for you to think about if you are not too sure. And for those of you who are interested in getting antidepressants as a treatment, you would have to get it from a psychiatrist. So what you would need to do is to actually go to a family doctor or a general doctor and get a referral to the psychiatry department in the hospital. And from there on, the hospital should be able to guide you through the process. Here's what I think about overcoming depression is that through trial and error of all these different treatment options that are made available for you, you can actually get better. Even though it is a very gradual process and it may take years for you to finally discover what's the right formula that works for you, it is something that is treatable. And like what I shared about my experience with antidepressants, a lot of time the treatment can only help us to get back to a very neutral level, but it's through our own self-discovery and learning about life where we can start to find happiness in life again. In the past four and a half years after I stopped taking antidepressants, I continued to do everything that I could to maintain a healthy body and mind. I continued to work out and meditate and to practice yoga. I continued to read a lot of self-help books from building good habits to learning about money, about manifestation, about how to lead a good life. I've also explored different career options and side hustles and just experiences in life to really help me figure out what life is all about. And I feel like it's through all these different experiences and learnings that I've had along the way that brought me to the point where I can confidently tell you today that I am depression-free. It is a long-term process. It is a gradual process. But yes, it is somewhere that you can eventually get to the point where you are free. My life has changed completely after going through depression. And here are a few things that I want to share with you about how has depression changed my life. One of the biggest decisions that I made in my life, and it's because of depression, instead of moving back to Canada with the work permit that I already had and I had the work visa on the way, I chose to stay in Malaysia. Because number one, I've learned the importance of being close to my family. And number two, I figured out in that point that I have a bigger mission in life, which is to be the voice for those who are struggling with mental illness. And if I were to move back to Canada, it is a place where the resources and awareness are more available. And so I decided to stay in Malaysia because I felt like the impact of my voice would be much more stronger. And that is a huge decision because we all know that Malaysia, it's a beautiful country. We have amazing people here, but you can't compare the life being in a developed country versus a developing country. It's just different. And there are still points today where when I look at the political situation in the country, I question my decision. But it is a huge decision that I made at that point of my life that has changed my life completely from what it would have been. Secondly, is because of depression, I also have a purpose and direction in life. So I just told you guys about this big mission that I have in my life. And I think that because I know this direction that I'm going to, it has also made navigating my career and my life path a lot easier. Of course, I'm still adulting. I'm still unclear of how my life path is, but I definitely have a more clear direction compared to most of my peers who have not gone through anything major like that. I know for a fact that corporate is not my path, I know for a fact that I would be doing somewhere along the line of being creative and an entrepreneur. And I know that it's not an easy path, but because I have such a clear vision and mission in my life, it has made navigating my career path a lot easier. Thirdly, 
I've also learned to appreciate the simple little things in life. Things like being able to just spend time with my family, to have a life partner where I can do mundane daily chores like doing the laundry, planning for groceries, or even just eating out at the hawker. I'm so grateful for it. And I'm also grateful that I have a wedding planning to stress about because if I were to just remain in that dark space that I was back then, how would I have been able to find love and have a life that I can actually look forward to? And fourthly, I've also learned to love myself better. Through the career break that I took at that point, I learned to put myself first. I learned that a healthy self is the best gift that I can give to the people that I care about. And I also learned that we are all in our own path in life as well, that it is not a race. Because I went through a career break, I was bound to be a little bit behind compared to my peers in terms of their career. But that experience doesn't really define who I am because I'm probably destined to have a very different life path. So I learned to be a lot gentler on myself when it comes to stress. And this is a huge breakthrough coming from someone who has always been very competitive and had high standards for herself since primary school. I want to tell you guys a story. When I was eight years old, I had my first 82%, like 82, it was still an A minus in an exam. And I went home. I locked myself in the toilet and I cried about it. My mom never gave me the pressure to get like straight A+. It was never my parents' intention to get me to be like super high achiever. But it was something that was ingrained in me and I used to be so harsh on myself. And to be able to learn to be gentler on myself, it was a huge breakthrough. I have also learned to be very mindful with triggers like how I would avoid shows or stories that has maybe sexual assault or suicide in them. Or maybe on days where everyone is sharing about a specific big suicide news, I would actually protect my space and log out of social media so as not to be triggered by it. And all in all, I think by loving myself more, I learned to open up and depend on others to get through life. Because I learned that to love myself more is to open up myself to others for them to care for me as well so speaking of others depression has also taught me to be a better friend i have learned to be a lot more patient and understanding with friends and family who are going through shit in their life and i'm just generally a lot more compassionate when it comes to people who are struggling whether it's mentally or physically and I've also become that person that can be there for those who are probably going through something more severe. I remember having this friend who called me when she was stuck in a very negative space in her head and she was actually self-harming. And I was so surprised by how I was able to deal with it very calmly in a way that did not make her feel worse about her situation. And I was just there for her. And even though she felt so bad and kept apologizing about bringing that very dark space to me, I was so grateful at that point that I can be that person to be there for her at this very, very dark stage in her life. But yeah, it made me a better friend. Lastly, I guess this is also the point that I want for you to take home as well, is that because of depression, I no longer live in the past or too obsessively in the future, I learned to live in the present. One of the first lessons that I learned in this self-healing journey from one of the counselors in my university is this past, present, future chart. It says that obsessive thoughts about the past leads to depression and obsessive thoughts about the future leads to anxiety. It is only when you ground yourself back to the present that you can truly live and not be haunted by your thoughts. A huge part of my depression journey stemmed from a traumatic incident in my past. 
And I once was so trapped in the past that I got into depression and I was in a very dark phase for a very, very long time. And when I learned to ground myself back to the present, I feel a lot lighter because I'm no longer haunted by the thoughts that I have in my head. And because I'm so focused on living in the present, that had actually made me I think that was one of the reasons that it was so hard for me to revisit the past again and it was really scary at first. And I'm very glad that I was able to revisit it to reflect about what I've learned from that journey and to share with you here today. And here is my conclusion from my reflection of this whole depression experience is that when you are going through depression, it felt like you are in the darkest place in the world that it's not worth living again. But what depression is, it's truly the start of a new beginning for yourself. It's like a reboot button. Because you were already in the darkest place in the world that it's the worst already. How much more worse can it be? This is actually your chance to just start over and not give a fuck about everything anymore and to rewrite your life. This is a new beginning. I hope you get to see the positive light at the end of the tunnel again. For those of you who are listening and might be struggling today, I hope that this episode gives you a little bit of hope. And if you're not struggling today, but want to help those who might be struggling, you can help by sharing this episode on your Insta story or other social media platforms that they can listen to this entire episode. That is a very subtle way to help them because you don't need to private message them directly to feel attacked. And let's help more people to realize that there is indeed a light at the end of the tunnel. It has been a pleasure sharing with you in this episode and I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Goodbye. Bye-bye.